Hello and welcome to AWCI's webinar. My name is Tao Nguyen, AWCI's Education Program Manager, and today's webinar is an open forum about drywall cart safety. Before we start, a few housekeeping items. Um, one, all attendees should be on mute. Two, should you have questions at any time during the broadcast, please submit it in using the question box in your GoToWebinar dashboard. We'll make every attempt to answer your questions. Um, there's a lot to cover about drywall cart safety, so if you miss any part of the webinar, we'll send you a recording when we send out an email for all, all of our registrants. And at this time, I'd like to introduce our first panelist, Livia Lin. Livia is the general manager of Magnum Tools Corporation. This family of run business designs, manufactures, and distributes tools and equipment to various construction trades. Livia has her hands on all aspects of the product development life cycle, such as working with contractors in the field, mocking up 3D printed prototypes, or making raw material selections with vendors. And joining Livia, we also have some familiar faces. Um, first off, Ed Henley, the Director of Safety for the Raymond Group. Ed has over 25 years of experience in the industry, overseeing safety operations. Next is George Vasquez. He's currently the Director of Safety for the Merrick family of companies. His 20 year experience in the general and construction industry has helped him develop a passion for the safety in the workforce and a sense of pride for teaching others. And last but not least, Mike Hill, the Senior Manager Corporate Safety at PCI performance contracting group. Mike has been in construction and with PCG for 15 years, for which he has been on both the operations and safety side. So welcome panelists. And now I'll hand it over to Ed to start the discussion. Tao, thank you very much and welcome everybody. Thank you for, for joining us today for, for I think a, a, a very important discussion. One, um, one we've been talking about now for for quite a while, and I'm I'm really happy and, and excited to to um, to share this conversation with everyone. And that's really kind of how we wanted this uh, this webinar to go today is is a a good um, interactive discussion. So as as we talk these these next um, uh, these next you know thirty forty minutes or so, however long we go, that that um, bring your questions to us because we definitely like to hear from you and. Um, and would like to to answer questions that we can and find solutions for the ones that we can't. Um, and I, I did want to extend a, a special thank you to our panel that's here because I think collectively together we're going to um, um, we're going to find some solutions that are, are big challenges out in, in in the industry. So, do we want to start talking about some of the challenges that we see in the field and then solutions? How do you guys want to do that? Sure. I think um, we sent out a survey to AWCM. We got a lot of good feedback back from that survey. So we'll start off with um, going through some of those survey results. Um, as I mentioned before, you know, we really want this to be a collaborative conversation. So, you know, any comments or questions, go ahead and put that in the chat. Um, and, and Tao will be able to, you know, highlight those for us. So we got a really eclectic mix of different, you know, uh, participants answering our survey. You know, anywhere from owners to management um, to actual tradesmen, a lot of safety people, um, and a lot of people on my you know, side, you know, the manufacturing distribution side as well. Um, primarily, the respondents of this survey and a lot of the participants are mostly in the commercial side. Um, we will probably want to, you know, reach out to our friends on the residential side, um, get more of their feedback as well to make sure, you know, they're fully looped in this conversation as well. Um, this one's a very interesting one. So we wanted to see if our participants had actually um, received, you know, specific job site training related to drywall cart safety. And I think this is, you know, um, it's pretty interesting. It's about 60-40. So about 60% of the people do have received some sort of training. It doesn't say how much training, whether it was comprehensive, good training, bad training, just they talked about it. Um, and I think it's really telling that a good 40% of the field are saying that they have never received any training, something that hopefully um, this panel and AWCI can help with uh, solving. And then we had an open-ended question. Um, 
And what's really interesting is, you know, in my conversations with Mike, Ed, and George, all of these things, all of these topics did come up. Um, you know, I just pulled out some of the keywords that we saw in the survey results, but we've got anything from crush toes because they're pulling the cart backwards to board sliding off, landing on toes, um, carts falling off a walk path and tipping, um, depressions in the concrete causing the cart to tip, um, large boards such as RFP, um, or the very common cart got borrowed um, and something inappropriate or too heavy was placed on that cart and left on the cart. Um, the only one I was not quite sure was with this cot in between, you know, if whoever submitted that particular um, scenario, I would love to hear a little bit more about it. Um, very interesting to see what that, what that meant. Um, and then this one's a very interesting one. Do you feel safe and confident using a drywall cart or having your staff use a traditional drywall cart? Um, I do want to mention that most of our discussion today is going to be about you know, the traditional drywall cart that, you know, has been in the industry for a very long time that you see on most commercial job sites. Um, and most people are confident, but there is a small subset of the population, about, you know, 12% here, um, that say that they don't feel safe. So we want to see what we can do to help them feel safe um, about using this tool. And then which do you think is the root cause of most drywall cart related incidents? Um, He's a manufacturer, I'm very happy to um, say that the results saying for poor product design isn't too high. Most of it is, um, people do feel that it is user error. So we'll go into some of those details as part of this presentation, hopefully. And, you know, um, we just wanted to have this conversation because, you know, when we poll the AWCI membership to identify issues in the field, um, it's gonna help manufacturers like myself make better products. Um, it's going to help the safety directors such as Mike, George, and Ed, like create better um, training and best practices. And then, you know, an organization like AWCI helps us disseminate and get that information into the field, um, make it common practice. So, so we'll head it over to Ed. He's going to be asking me some questions right now in this segment um, about, you know, what are some of the design principles um, that a manufacturer like myself um, uses when we're designing and creating um, a drywall cart. So, well, that, that was that was kind of a lead-in question. Um, <laughs> so, so what what are some of the design principles that you guys use when when designing and and producing drywall carts? So, one of the biggest things that we have is you know weight capacity, right? That that's one of the the first things that you look at. Um, Ed, so if let me ask you a question. If you're in the market to buy a brand new truck, right? Um, let's say you don't have any strong feelings one way or the other about um, the brand or the salesperson selling to you, and the specs for the two trucks are virtually the same. The only difference is that one truck can co tow 30% more weight than the other truck, right? Um, even if your boss doesn't even allow you to tow that much weight, he says, you know, our company policy is that we don't. We don't have trucks that tow that much. Which truck are you going to pick? Even if, if they're exactly the same price, everything else is the same. You more than likely the one that has the, the bigger towing capacity. And, and that's exactly the way it is with drywall cards as well. So, you know, as a manufacturer, we're really incentivized to make carts with as high of a capacity as possible. That number, you know, we want it to be as big or bigger than our competition because the buyers and users are usually incentivized to pick the one that has the largest weight capacity. Um, that doesn't always mean that that is what, you know, the, the field, the, the safety directors in the field want you to fill that car all the way up to the max. Um, you know, tools can always be abused. Um, so the weight capacity for a wilded steel drywall cart is determined, you know, mostly by the casters um, since, you know, a welded steel frame usually isn't going to give out before something that's made out of, you know, resin and, and plastic and, and you know, it, the, the, the casters give out first, let's put it that way. Um, you know, we do a lot of different testing. This is an example of, you know, the first step of our testing, we, we throw our wheels onto, um, you know, these types of systems so we can see how, how far it can go under what type of weight. Um, let's see. So, you know, we do weight testing, we do stress testing, which means we run these casters 
you know, over and over and over again, um, you know, days at a time to see how they wear. And then we do a lot of field testing as well to figure out, you know, in a controlled environment, such as the manufacturing floor, you know, it's, it's very different from what it's like on an actual job site, you know, with divots in the ground and, you know, gravel and, um, you know, sharp objects and stuff like that as well. Um, that being said, um, our casters are in no way weak. You know, they're advertised for um, 3,200 pounds, um, which is about 800 pounds per caster. Um, you know, that's that's a lot more weight than you probably would put in drywall because, you know, the, the base of that plate isn't even wide enough to put 3,200 pounds worth of drywall on there. Um, there's also a lot of different options when we're choosing wheels and casters. Um, one of the big ones is, you know, the difference between a lock and a brake. Um, you know, this can be, you know, kind of misleading sometimes because a lock prevents the caster um, from spinning and that basically turns a swivel caster into a fixed caster, whereas a brake is something that prevents the entire caster from moving. Um, which means that it's going to park the brake or the cart in place. Um, we recommend that, and this is also from you know our conversations in the field too, um, that when you're setting up your cart, you put the swivel side closest to the user and the fixed side a little bit further away um, on the uh, the other side, um, and. You know, that's for when you're going generally in a straight path, you know, you have a little bit more room to navigate. It's going to be easier to control the cart if you set it up swivel on your side and fixed on the farther side. The only time you want to put your casters in all swivel um, is when you're in a very, very narrow confined space, such as, you know, tight hallways with lots of doors and, you know, that you're trying to navigate through. It's harder to control a cart with all swivel wheels. Um, you know, just like if you ever driven one of those IKEA shopping carts around the floor. Libby, I've got a I've got a, um, a question. It kind of ties in with these last couple of slides that we talked yeah. about. And and Mike and, and George, if, if you if you want to jump in here, please do. And when we talk about weight capacity and, and bigger, stronger, right, um, uh, better. Some of my concerns with you know with that are once we get those carts loaded with our material and we're moving from from point A to point B, um, we we have to stop those things. And we're, while we were talking about casters and and uh, brakes versus locks, I I know we touched on this briefly, but and maybe we don't have a good solution for this. But I thought it's a, a good point to or time to bring up the point that what's a safer way to stop these things? Once we get that momentum going of several thousand pounds, and it's even if it is two people, which we recommend two people doing it, it's really hard to stop those, especially if you start hitting some grade. On the flat concrete, which none of us have flat concrete, there's always slope to it. <laughs> slope to it somewhere, um, and and a braking system to stop momentum is something I know I've talked about with several other safety directors, general contractor safety directors, also braking mechanisms to slow down a cart. I don't know if, if that's something George or Mike, you guys have have entertained. I will add to that Ed, that it's really important to plan your route it's kind of like the way we kind of instruct our workers is kind of like when you put shingles on the roof and you're ready to start working up there once those packages of shingles it starts falling off and you try to do something you might be catching yourself on a, on a more harmful position trying to stop something that already gained momentum and and the same thing goes for a dolly when you put so much weight into it that that some pre-planning should have taken place for the route you know what was the scope of the work that you're trying to do and and plan ahead um not to lose control but if you lose control we, we always tell our employees let it go um is one of those things because obviously you're probably going to harm yourself the material can always be replaced but pre-planning is is key to it knowing what uh, amount of weight you're putting on this um, equipment, piece of equipment. Absolutely, and I can uh, second, you know, that these are probably the most dangerous tool we have that we, we lack training on uh, because we assume a lot of people know how to use them. 
uh, coming from a manufacturer standpoint of being able to load the cart uh, in excess of you know a thousand pounds up to two thousand plus uh, really is a little bit concerning uh, you know for what we're talking about here it's runaway carts or um, let's face it the obstructions on a job site whether it's a hole cover or trying to get up a ramp um, trying to you know just even navigate it into a, a certain tight area could cause the load to become unstable and so you know, I think George is absolutely correct in that pre-planning of, of how do we get the material to the actual site to put it up on the walls. That's all really great feedback. Um, you know, as a manufacturer, you know, sometimes our incentives don't line up with, you know, what the safety directors um, are asking us to do. So this is something that we can look into, you know, is there a way to, you know, market these differently where we're saying, you know, we're not trying to make a cart that you can put as much weight as you possibly could conceive. We're trying to find out, you know, what is an actual safe weight um, and work with the field to, um, you know, set limits on these tools. Um, you know, a lot of it is also based off of the way that these drywall carts are designed. You know, we want to make sure that the frame, you know, is a, is a perfect 90 degrees. Uh, we've, we've gotten carts back from our manufacturing, you know, field where we've had to reject them, say, hey, um, you know, your, your angle is off by, you know, one degree, you know, even that when you get to the top really changes the lean um, of that cart. Um, you know, so as a manufacturer, we have to be very, very careful to make sure that is a true 90. Um, we also try to make sure that that center of gravity is calculated correctly. You want to make sure that it's not, you know, too far one way or too far the other. Um, and I, I think a big design principle of this cart is that it is designed for something that is four feet high in length. Um, you know, the width, you know, can vary quite a bit. You know, standard drywall goes in there from eight feet to 12. Um, and we see even longer boards occasionally. But if you put something that is higher than four feet, that's when you have the problem of um, your center of gravity no longer being appropriate to this drywall cart. Um, and, and that's a lot of the accidents that we heard from the field. It's like people putting um, items on these carts that it simply wasn't designed to handle. Um, you guys have any feedback on this particular slide? Yeah, I will add uh, one of the common things that we often see is, for instance, waiting for material to be delivered at the job site. And sometimes that goes along with the pre-planning aspect that we're talking about here, because oftentimes, because of weather, because of certain conditions, getting the elevator, for instance, to, to be scheduled for a delivery. Sometimes you end up with material arriving late in the afternoon. And what that does in some cases is they end up leaving dollies loaded with material. This is sort of the, your common stalkers in some cases, right? Where do you place this, this, this cart, right? To make sure it's out of the way. And, and it goes back to the, um, images that we're seeing here is, is that doll is being inspected, does it have the right balance, right, when it's to state by itself? Because in some cases, if the frame is bent a little bit out of shape, the welding can be, you know, broken in some cases where crack, and I, I think we're going to talk a little bit more about that later. It can also cause an easy way for the equipment to tip over. And also, considering if you left it alone, even if it's empty, somebody else using it, beyond the rating like it's showing here right if, if it's designed for four feet sometimes you have other trades saying oh here's a, a you know a cart i can use to load a frame for a big window or things of that nature and all of a sudden you find yourself if you own them those those cards could be a potential liability because now they're using this cart left alone unattended creating a risk for either an occupied building that somebody's working at an office, your workers, uh, bystanders, a number of things can happen that often doesn't get discussed much of how hazardous can it be if they're unattended, overloaded, or not inspected well, where the frame can cause the equipment to tip over. That's really good points, George. Um, you know, as a manufacturer, if I send out a cart in the field and it's 90 degrees and you know the center of gravity is calculated correctly but um you know uh it gets bent exactly what you said. it's no longer 90 degrees or you know weird size casters are modified and added to the cart 
throwing off that center of gravity, you know, you, we could be in a pickle. Um, so someone asked, what about the 54 yes. inch drywall on these carts? Are they designed for it? There's, there's a range that it can handle. Um, obviously when we design a cart, it's, <laughs> there's always, um, just like the weight capacity, right? The reason why it's 3,200 is because we're trying to make sure that there's a um, safety factor. So, you know, that that should be fine. Um, but it's when you go, as as you know, George mentioned, like a giant wind, you know, a 10 by 10 window frame on this cart, that's when you're really going to see a lot of issues or a big steel plate. Um, you know, it's really, really heavy. You know, the weight isn't distributed like drywall, you know, where it's very even. That's when you're going to have issues. Um, we had, we had talked earlier about, um, you know, the wrong size casters or, or the wrong position casters, you know, those, those have to be chosen very specifically for each cart as well. For example, our DOR 03 is our residential drywall cart. Um, it's our smallest cart. Um, you have to have wheels that only fit for the DOR 03 because the angle of those casters is much more acute, um, because the cart is smaller and you don't want those casters to end up hitting themselves when you're walking, when, when it's rolling, right? Um, if you don't pay attention to small things like this and you just think that, you know, any any old caster will do, um, or maybe even putting air tires on one of these things, um, if you're trying to use this cart outdoors where it's not really designed, um, you know, we end up with, you know, potential tipping issues. Um, another design principle that we have here is, you know, um, I like carts that have handles to minimize pinch points um, so that your hand doesn't accidentally get stuck behind the drywall and in a crush injury situation. Um, yeah, also having handles helps force the users to lower their center of gravity and push the cart via the handles where you're supposed to be moving them versus, um, you know, trying to push on the board um, or, or, you know, move the move the cart in an unnatural way. So, you know, the ones that I have highlighted here do have specific um, dedicated places for a user to put his hands. Um, Any feedback or questions? The previous, yeah, about the wheels. Sure. What about aftermarket wheels? Octopush, does it affect the stability of the seat of the cart? Um, I can't speak to that. I do know that, um, you know, other manufacturers do have add-ons that they've created for their drywall carts. Um, I would just stick with, you know, if you're buying another manufacturer's cart and they have an Octopush type of scenario, I would add those to that cart. I wouldn't necessarily mix it between different manufacturers because each cart might be sized a little different. And that Octopush situation where you have um, oh, for anybody who doesn't know, this is adding, you know, basically taking a four wheel drywall cart, making an eight wheel drywall cart. Um, you just want to make sure that, you know, your manufacturer is doing all those calculations for you to make sure the center of gravity and everything is still calculated correctly and nothing's going to hit. Basically, mixing brands is, is, is sometimes, you know, not, um, it's not recommended by a manufacturer. Livia, if I may add, yes. I think uh, yeah. in our case that we have some some from our trays, we got the regular hangers that hang the drywall, right? Sure. They'll go and pick it up maybe from the stacks of rock that arrive on the job site. But we also have the stockers. Now, they use a different set of dollies. Uh, the ones they use, the stockers that do this all day, their dollies have a, a, a different kind of wheel I want to say it's a little bit smooth ride when they're moving. Since they're moving, it makes it a lot easier for them um, because that's all they do all day. So we did consider the different kind of casters that that the ones they have. The other ones are work perfectly okay, but for those who are doing stocking, um, the wheels are a little bit more of a soft ride. Uh, uh, the material is different; it's not that hard plastic. Uh, I don't know if that's the case for your manufacturer where you can spank a little bit, but it does make a difference since they're going to be pushing this thing all day long or different ones, moving material um, as they deliver, it, it plays a big role because, for instance, if they're transitioning in between an Olivian floor, right, um, it's a smooth rather than a hard when they're, when they're moving it. The other thing they always consider is, I think you mentioned residential, the flooring, right, 
uh, for residential no concrete for commercial you're always going to find those holes or, or uneven uh, patches on the wood um, that sometimes is going to make a difference that might cause the dolly to tip over because of the wheels so wheels do play at least what we've seen a big role whether they're soft hard you know and 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 the way they're constructed for that also the person that is operating this piece of equipment yeah absolutely um i'm trying to find the picture um in on this slide here i have my new uh my new cartwheels these are just hitting the market right now this is a hard pu and it's a flat wheel versus our traditional drywall cart wheel it, it's a softer resin and it's got a dome shape so we call this um these wheels are max performance in ter in the terms of it it moves smoother right um, whereas this cart here with the green wheels we call this our max endurance so if you're leaving drywall stocked on a job and you need it to be off the floor on a cart um depending on how much weight you put um with my new cart the one that i have side by side you know you could put two loads of drywall on there and that's almost five thousand pounds if you leave it you know for two weeks on the job site with our traditional drywall cart wheels um you might end up seeing it flatten out a little bit you know that is a you know you can't have both you know you can't have it super hard and you know and soft enough to roll so we do recommend um, the harder wheels so it really just depends exactly what you said what are you using the cart for um you know what type of terrain what the situation is it just like george says not every cart and every wheel works for every situation so our recommendation is just be cognizant of it. you know pick the right job pick the right tool for the job mm -hmm. Going back, yep, handles. Um, I guess we touched about this a lot. Um, you know, our role as a manufacturer, sometimes we're a little bit removed from the field and we don't like to be. So we really want, um, you know, feedback from the field about what modifications and changes you guys do see, um, you know, could be possible on these carts. You know, it seems like there are a lot of issues and we do want to make an improve upon the design um you know is there anything that we can do better so you know reach out to me you know safety at magnumtool.com is you know you know an email address that you know will port directly basically to my email box and we'll see your recommendations um and you know reach out to awci as well um they will be able to you know consolidate a lot of these different requests or you know ideas um, and send them to people like myself. So, and and send them to Mike and Ed and George, you know, who can create, you know, guidelines for their their um, their guys and share that with the rest of the field. That will make every our job site safer. You guys, have anything to add? Uh, just just a couple things. Kind of goes along with with the conversation we've had. You talked about, you know, some uh, some projects, some some customers or general contractors require us to have all of our material on a cart mobile so that it can be moved from from place to place and and um and, and then also uh some of our uh not some of our almost all of our um hangers work off of these carts and it becomes a, a workstation for them to to install the once it's loaded on that cart they they install it but between the time it hits the job site and it's loaded on a cart and it's actually installed um being able to make sure that that load is secured on that cart with some sort of strap or tie back or if we lean it up against a wall we use rock steady clips and i'm sure everyone uses a different variation of that to make sure the secure but that that's definitely a, um something i don't see in the industry that could be an improvement just to kind of spur some conversation with everyone here and um and then you you mentioned a second ago about handles and i was thinking of pinch points um and you know people getting their their hands caught in between something so um, I, I like what I see with the handles there. I know that I haven't seen a whole bunch of those. You grab onto the board really to move it because there is no handle to move the cart. Um, and sometimes that board will go sliding. So I don't, I didn't know if George and, and Mike, if you guys had anything to add with that, but those are, those are some things for us. We're seeing that more and more commonplace things have to be on wheels so we can move them and we need to secure them because sometimes they'll be there for a week or two before we install it. Absolutely. Uh, I think you're spot on with, you know, using them as workstations. I hear that more and more with our field uh, and our superintendents and see it out there uh, that, that our teams work off of these cards, um, you know, 
whether it's down a hallway, uh, putting up a bunch of rock, or if it's in a congested room, they, they like the ability to move them around and get the material uh, to where it goes. So I think that there's a perfect opportunity there, um, you, you know, to work with teams to in the field to, to help with design uh, of these carts. Uh, I'm with you, Ed, on the, the handles piece. I, I know that we've experienced some incidents um, with pushing on the actual drywall. Um, and essentially when you're using the drywall, uh, I know Olivia you talked about, you know, where to, you haven't really told us where to push, but I know that uh, your first picture there uh, on, the, on the slideshow, you know, it's about, you know, 60% up on that, that card or, or wherever it is, you know, at the midway point so that you're trying to keep that center of gravity low. I think that where we run into some of these issues and, and kind of coupling it with what George was talking about, dumping the cart, if it's going to go, let it go, is when we are pushing that drywall. Uh, and we do have our hands on the drywall uh, and moving it around the job site rather than u utilizing a handle. Um, and then the, the the pinch point as well. So I, I'm, I'm excited to see this. I, I do have a couple of questions, I guess, from the manufacturer standpoint uh, on an inspection of these carts. Um, because, uh, you know, all of us today on this call are, are listening to, you know, the experts uh, in the industry, uh, yourself, Olivia, talking about these cars. How do we take this message to the field uh, and, and make a training out of it? And so that, you know, they know that a, a rounded wheel car can't have uh, material on it for, for longer than a certain duration um, or it needs a different wheel or there are other uh, wheels and options. So I guess from your perspective, one, what, what takes a cart out of service uh, in the manufacturer's eyes uh, from uh, either a broken weld or an out of plumb or, or what have you? We have a slide on that further into the, sh into the discussion. So um, I think it'll be best if we hit that then so I don't forget a few points. Perfect. I love this discussion. Um, you know, all these things are we, we manufacturers can't come up with these ideas if we don't work with you guys to figure out what actually works, you know, um, anything else is, becomes a gimmick, right? Um, we want things that are actually practical, um, logical designs. So, um, yeah, so that's kind of my perspective so far from a manufacturer's perspective. We will talk about inspection and things to look at um, from a manufacturer's perspective as well. But I really wanted to, now I'm going to turn this kind of on your heads, including the audience as well. Um, let's say I've designed a cart. I've made sure that, you know, everything is to my spec and it's it's going out in the field. Um, how do we make sure that this tool is used in a way that is, is safe? Um, so we got a lot of different discussion points here. Um, I want to remind the audience right now that anything that we discuss is just their examples. Um, this is not a comprehensive list. We need to add more things to this list as well. Um, I'm looking forward to, you know, what the audience has to add. Um, and anything that we describe is going to be specific to, you know, every card is going to be a little bit different from their specs, what they can carry. Um, and, you know, job sites vary a lot. So just a little caveat there. Um, we talked about this earlier. Um, you know, George and I had a great conversation when we were preparing for this. Um, you know, tell me about these cards when they're shown, when they, when they're put on a job site and you got a new user, you know, what are some of the expectations, um, that you share with your field about how it should be used? Questions for me? Yeah. yeah. I mean, we talked about, yeah. yeah. Okay. So one thing we realize is we do training for power tools, equipment, such as ladders and scaffold. But really, really, we didn't have that much, you know, uh, coverage when it came to carts. You know, it's always the assumption that it's a simple tool. There's nothing to it. You just put stuff on it and you move it, right? But you'd be surprised how many people, going back to Mike's point, um, have no training whatsoever included on their orientation. You know, you figure it's just a, a platform, a little uh, device with wheels. Uh, but we come to realize that there was a lot that needed to be said. And there was a lot of assumption, especially when you have a lot of uh, new folks joining the industry, right? You assume a lot of the folks in the field are going to teach that information to the to the upcoming uh, workers, and, and it wasn't happening. It was more of a common sense thing, but it was never really structured. So we started looking at the different accidents, doing accident reviews, and looking at the causes that 
you know, that led to some of the serious injuries. And those were not training the employees that were coming in how to do the proper lifting to put something on the dolly. Because it might be simple, but once you start putting weight on it, if it's not locked, if the wheels are not chalked, that, that thing is going to just move away from you. Then some of them will think that because they have the car with them, I can go and love load drywall myself. I go to the gym, I do exercise. I'm, I'm that kind of young guy thinking mentality, but it wasn't because they can lift as much weight as they can think uh, that we hire them. We let them know that it was a skill set that we were really curious about when they thought about loading materials. So anyways, loading and unloading materials play a big role, making sure we make them understand because it's not just drywall, it could be other things, right? It, it could be metal studs, it could be a number of things that they're going to try to put on these things. And while the drywall is, it's not really sharp on the edges in some cases, but when you try to get the dolly inside of a door, for instance, of, of, of trying to maneuver that, back to Mike's point, you can cross your hands, right? If there's not a right place to put it or on the elevator, the same way. Uh, so we always remind them, you might have to deal with some hourly shaped objects besides drywall, right? Sharp objects such as metal studs some fragile uh, material as well, right? Even buckets for mud, right? For the finishing. So things of that nature, reminding the employees that they have to work in a pair of two when lifting, right? And that came along with other things such as stretching flags, right? Where do you position your hands? Um, things of that nature. Long answer, but I think there's several points here that included provide training on that specific piece of equipment rather than assume they're going to know how to operate it. I think that's a great point. Yeah, great yeah. point. When you hand a guy a tool, oftentimes he's assuming, oh, yeah, this is all I need, right? And, you know, this, it's a great car. It does hold a lot of weight. But if you're, if no one's holding it in place um, when you're trying to load the cart or you don't have a buddy, that's, you know, that's that's when things can slip or accidents can happen. The most common one you have is they try to stop the dolly from falling. And, and yeah. all of a sudden you get crush arms, you know, uh, parts of the legs or body, even they go with the, the whole thousand pound uh, drywall stack trying to hold it and they end up falling. And in some cases they end up falling some parts of the body underneath the, the whole stack. So that was a, a big one, stay out of the way. Yep. So when, um, you know, George shared with me some of his training documents to put this together, you know, their document said, refer to the loaded weight chart above to make your point. Well, I put it below, but 14 sheets is over a thousand pounds. To your point, it doesn't matter how young and buff and how much you go to the gym, you're not, you're, a cart with that itself is, you know, 95 pounds to so hundred pounds with a thousand pounds of drywall on it. You're not winning in that scenario, right? You're, you know, human, human zero drywall one, right? So don't try to be superheroes. Don't don't try to save anything. Get out of the way. You're more important than the drywall. Um, okay, so you know this segues perfectly. Yep. I was just going to say, you know, uh, as we are also talking about the weight of the drywall, you know, and George, thanks for that graphic. There. Uh, you know, I think the important thing to note here too is uh, floor covers um, uh, on the holes on the floors on our projects. Uh, you know, the OSHA standard is that it must, you know, meet twice the intended load uh, placed upon it. And when you look at some of the weight of these, what the drywall carts can have, uh, it's essentially the same as parking a scissor lift uh, on top of some of these hole covers. So, you know, when we're traversing about the job site and moving the product uh, to and from, uh, you know, the weight that the just the drywall itself can carry uh, or the cart itself can carry. Uh, with the drywall loaded on it can uh, be very, very significant. You know, Mike, you, you mentioned a good point. Um, they had a situation where the one uh, building in downtown here in uh, Houston have a computer floor raised up off the floor, right? Obviously those, when they're placing them, some areas might be still not structurally sound as well. Um, not considering the weight of the drywall on that dolly moving it through that those kind of floors whether it's that or some finished floor so there's a lot to it 
when you start thinking about the weight and, and, and when you put the figures there for the folks to know, hey, this is how much it weights once it's loaded. Um, and this thing, if it begins to fall, there's no way you're gonna by yourself try to hold it in any way. Uh, so it's really important when you start putting those numbers to realize how much weight is on this uh, piece of equipment. Okay, so, you know, um, a commercial drywall cart has enough space to fit. If you're looking at 5H drywall, that's about 18 sheets if you were to fill it up to the max. Um, and if you're using half inch, that's 24 sheets. So that's, you know, very close to, if not exactly almost 2,000 pounds when working with 12 foot, foot sheets. So, um, you know, just reiterating, I know that, you know, we, we, we asked you guys, you know, as a general practice, how many sheets um, do you guys actually put, you know, do you actually tell your guys, don't go more than this? So, okay, so yeah, we have a poll question. So the presenter can't see the answers, but uh, the, as it comes up on the screen, there are 18% said fill it up to the max, 18% said 18 sheets, 38% said 14 sheets, and 26% said 10 to 12 sheets. Interesting. So a lot, a lot you know, every, everybody does it a little bit differently. Uh, I, I think the moral of the story is um, when you have them filled up all the way, it's, it's very, very heavy. You know, there's a lot of pitfalls of that. Um, and I, I do applaud those, those contractors who, you know, take time and think about you know what their policies on their on their field will be on their job sites i'm curious in that whole question is that is are those sheets relative to to length that in to ask that question in the, in the poll question and and thickness okay this was yeah. referring to half inch four by 12 sheets okay perfect So um, these are, you know, the next, the following few slides, I think are just um, a lot of them are just kind of no brainers, but they're just reminders to the field of, you know, things that um, I worked with Mike, Ed and George to kind of put together, um, you know, from some training documents that we've seen that are available on just common sense rules. Um, if either one of you guys want to talk to this, this one, this slide. I don't, I don't like seeing that on the job site, <laughs> Yeah, but I, but it, it does happen, um, yeah. in, in an effort to move material and, you know, and, and keep schedule. Sometimes you see people load those things up way too quickly, or there's people misusing them because they weren't properly trained and that risk goes up and unfortunately bad things happen. So yeah, I definitely don't like seeing that on the job site. This, I mean, this scenario is much more likely to have those tipping situations where it's sliding off, crushing your foot, um, because you know there's just it's just not a stable. You have one one place of support instead of you know having the entire drywall cart you know supporting that weight. So it's pretty simple. Don't don't leave a gap, guys. Slow down. Take your time when you're loading it, um, and have someone check to see if you actually did scoot it all the way back. Um, you know, first sheet usually pretty easy to tell, but all the subsequent sheets, you have to be careful as well. It, it can cause a problem if you, you know, do the first sheet properly and then the second sheet, you still have a big gap in, in between that as well. If I may add on this, uh, on that slide, uh, Livia, really quick is, sometimes you have where they're almost done with the material, they're using the cart, they're cutting the drywall from the cart. And if you look at the image where it says on safe, that is really close to the edge. When you, when you mark the the sheet and you cut it, they have to bend it or break it. A lot of times those end up falling off the edge and landing on people's toes. Um, and that's because, you know, they try to accommodate in a way where they can work, should be able to work from them, but that's really key to watch, not leaving a gap on the back or it's not up the way to the front. So preventing the sheet rock from sliding out. And I, I've got just a quick one to add to, to George's also when we were talking about, you know, this unsafe gap and we were just talking about training and, and procedure but what I think Mike mentioned earlier the minimum uh what, what your inspection criteria are for the cart so we can make sure that the teams are inspecting the things that the manufacturer wants them to inspect but what also are some of the minimum 
inspection or sorry, the minimum training things that you as a manufacturer want to make sure that people who are using your cart are trained on. So those can be incorporated into training programs. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, this one came straight out of, um, you know, some of the documents that uh, uh, George gave us that Merrick is teaching their guys in the field. Um, I'll let you speak to this. Yeah, the uh, illustration here is, is we realize that whenever they put the drywall center or a little bit pass on the straight wheels, those that were not swivel, it was a little bit heavier uh, or a little bit uh, difficult to maneuver the the um, dolly or the cart itself. So we recommended that shift the load a little bit about maybe past six inches towards the operator to the back where the swivel wheels are. So it makes it easier for them to um, move the dolly whenever they're driving it um, rather than having the load um, too heavy on one side. Um, well, this one's a follow-up question. If the board is going to be stored on the cart once they get to their destination, they're no longer going to be moving it, maneuvering it. Do they leave it like that or do they try to center the board back into the middle when it's being stored? That's a good question. Well, it will be hard once you have it loaded, fully loaded, to, to, to move all the sheets back into the center. We haven't experienced any issues uh, with the dollies like that, uh, but we do have several issues where, you know, they were centered and they were too heavy. For instance, they will go to, again, a drop off, a extension core or something that will step. They shouldn't, but again, they just run into it and it will cause the dolly just to kind of bump back. And then they will, they will try to do is gain more momentum or try to push it harder to go over that little whatever debris was and that will typically cause push the dolly the wrong way or push the drywall causing the, the, the whole load to tip over. That's why we figure if you put it back, there's a little bit more weight towards the back and it's easier for that wheel just to go over the bump of whatever you might encounter. But if it stops because it's too heavy and you push it, you're more likely to just throw the whole material out in you with the, with the momentum of the drywall. Okay. But I think the, um, the, the, the the moral of the story is it's a subtle shift. It's not a huge one. You said it's about, um, you said six inches, right? It's a little bit off. Yeah, the front wheels. Not too much, just a little bit, enough that, you know, you have a little bit more control um, and that it doesn't cause problems when it's part. Okay. So going Anybody off of the previous slide, someone asked like a stopper at the front. A stopper at the front would prevent that would prevent that against the sliding um so why isn't a stop uh, mandatory on the design of a board cart well that's an interesting question so let me see if i can find a picture of my new cart um let's go all the way to front here so this drywall cart it, it's a variation of a um a traditional i cart or h cart it does have a stopper in the front but this is also because this is not a full 90 degree um, a cart. You know, this cart is designed um, a little bit differently. So it is something that, you know, we're trying to look into and add. Um, but I think it has to do with, you know, inconveniences when you're loading, right? If you have a stopper in the front. Mike, George, Ed, do you guys have any add to that? Yeah, I've had the same, uh, very similar question of our teams uh, and, and the way it's been explained to me, uh, given the fact that our teams work off of these cards, uh, you know, that doesn't allow them to, to either score the board or, you know, it can get hung up on the front end. Uh, and then as well, it damages, can damage the drywall uh, if you have to lift the sheet even higher to get it over that front lip uh, or you're sliding it in from one way, uh, which is going to cause your cart to tilt and, and move on you. So. Um, those are a couple of the reasons I've heard. Uh, I do like, I, I've seen this, this model here and it, it would be very interesting that if those, those two front uh, pieces could be there during transport and then flipped out of the way uh, once it's in a, in a stable position, that would be a remarkable card, I think, uh, where you would be able to utilize that. That is exactly how this is designed. So um, this is a D-clip on either side. And then when you're in a loading situation, you can either just remove this bar entirely or flip it flat 
Um, and then when you're in a transport position, you can flip it back up and have it upright. So um, I'm glad you said that because someone just asked about that, if the stopper was retractable. So that's good to know it's removable as well. Yeah, not retractable. Well, that, that's a little <laughs> bit uh, more uh, complicated, but definitely removable and repositionable, put it that way. Um, okay, let's see. Let's go back to where we were. Um, Hey, Liv, I've got, I've got yeah, just one, sure. one other thing to add with specific with this card and, and maybe to kind of um, share with, with the audience our second part of this discussion, um, it, it, because I think this conversation can definitely go on when we talk about innovation and, and, and redesign. And, and as we get more questions from, from the audience, maybe we can start putting our, our think tanks together to, to start planning ahead for the next one. But I, I know we were trying to wrap this up here in the next few minutes, but um, I know that this particular cart that, that uh, Liv was just um, talking about, that, that it's gonna be hitting the market pretty soon. Um, we'll have some feedback on that particular cart um, that we can share with, with, um, with the audience as, as it starts to come out. And, um, but feedback from the field, feedback from the, from the audience on the call today would really help greatly increase the value of our, our part two of this discussions. Um, and yep. just to kind of touch on that. Exactly. I mean, we kind of kept this part one as what are we doing with traditional drywall carts? Um, and then part two, hopefully after we get a whole bunch of feedback from the field, you know, uh, we'll try to discuss what are some of the other things that we're doing? What are some new regulations or, or new policies um, that aren't necessarily the traditional, you know, um, this style of drywall cart. Um, I would yeah, encourage everyone least... to join in for the next part. Uh, make sure you don't miss it. And if you have other um, colleagues that they can attend to the meeting, because we're going to talk about different things. Like, for instance, when they lift dollies or carts with four lifts, right? I think Mike provided some good pictures. Also, uh, getting these things inside of an elevator. Uh, sometimes the material will shift away and fall and hurt, hit somebody else. So there's a lot of discussion pending. Uh, looking forward to hear from y'all. Absolutely. And I think, you know, one of the exciting things, uh, having, you know, talking about such a simple tool, uh, but this tool used incorrectly or overloaded uh, can, can really cause some big issues. And I think that this is our industry. Uh, and I really appreciate the AWCI and, and Livia for putting this thing together. I do believe that uh, part two, uh, you know, will happen and, and we're going to walk through some more detailed stuff on that. But I do think after that, uh, this is uh, something that we can tackle as a, as a safety group with the uh, AWCI. Beautiful. Well, since we only have a few minutes left um, before we hit the hour mark, I'm going to skip the whole slope discussion because I think that one's a really, really big one. Um, and that one, I'm sure we could all talk you know, for a good, good long time uh, and skip over to Dolly inspection. We'll revisit the topic of slopes and how to handle them in part two. Um, you know, I have a picture here of a really beat up looking drywall cart. And I wanted to mention as a manufacturer, just because the paint is chipped and it's ugly, doesn't mean that this isn't a perfectly safe cart. But you can also have a cart that looks relatively new, you know, pretty shiny still, that could have some serious issues. So don't read, you know, look at a book by its cover. Always take the time to inspect your cart, no matter what it may look like at first glance. Um, some of the things that we want to look at, um, and, you know, please jump in as well, team. Um, casters is going to be a big one, right? Um, inspect it daily before use, you know, don't get complacent about that. Um, lubricate the axles and the swivel. So any good cart is going to have a little grease nipple. Um, you know, if you don't have those, you know, lubrication, dedicated lubrication spots on your caster, that's not a good caster. Um, try not to get the lubricant all over the wheels because, you know, that can cause the cart to slip as well. Um, and casters wear out just like tires on a car. So as soon as there's any lifting of the rubber from the hub, you're gonna wanna make sure you replace that caster. Um, continuing to use a damaged caster is can lead to that hub being damaged more. And that's when it doesn't have the structural integrity of an eight inch wheel anymore and it can crumble. 
And when, when the, the wheel crumbles, that's when you're going to have a cart tip. Um, and the other thing here is just make sure that you set your brocks, but brakes and locks before loading the drywall and check to make sure that they're working. You don't want to load up the entire cart and then be climbing underneath it to try to set your locks. Um, you know, I, I think one of the guys mentioned as well, you know, sometimes those locks, you know, that's just a welded stem. It, it's an area that can fail, um, you know, is more likely to fail sooner than other components of a caster. And then, you know, this one's pretty straightforward too. Make sure um, you check your weld points for any cracks and damage. Um, don't use the cart if you see broken welds. Um, you know, you want to check your handles. You want to check the main frame. Um, and, and this one's a big one. Um, I'm going to throw it out to the, the team here to discuss how you guys actually manage this. Because my biggest fear as a manufacturer is that you know, these carts are not designed to last forever. You know, everything has a, as, as a reasonable, um, you know, working life. And when you have a cart that, you know, needs to be thrown away, um, I'm afraid that someone's going to, you know, see it laying in a corner and be like, oh, look, there's a perfectly good cart. And then, um, you know, stick something way too heavy on it and then um, have, have cause an accident. So how do you guys make sure that once a cart is rejected, it doesn't accidentally get used again? In our case, it gets inspected once it comes back to the job, I mean, to the warehouse after being on the job site, and then they get tagged and removed from the system. I mean, putting a lot of weight on something that is not structurally sound is a big no-no. So they do get their inspection and removed from service. I, I'll, I'll concur with George. If, if there's um, an inspection of a car that's been bent, um, damaged, overloaded, that we red tag those and, and they get shipped back to the warehouse and, and they'll be destroyed there. I th think what you just said is very key, just making sure that it does get red tagged so that even if it's not removed from the field immediately, people know this one's a goner, don't use it. Um, you know, we've already made our inspection and it did not pass. Okay. Um, and then the next one is um, damaged or bent structural components. Um, you know, when, when these frames get warped because maybe, you know, you used it on a forklift when you weren't supposed to. It says, do not forklift here. You did it anyway. Um, this cart, I think, came from, was this from you, George, on your job site, or was this from Mike? I don't remember. Um, I think it's Mike. Oh, this one's from Mike, yeah. So once the frames do get bent out of shape, you no longer have, um, you know, structural integrity and the angles may be off. So that might lead to tipping issues. Anything to add, guys? No, I think that that's that's a perfect uh, example of you know working and, and inspecting your equipment. Uh, and what we had found on this was that we were lifting the we had actually put the dunnage in to to offset it so that when you could move it off of the forklift. However, uh, using the forklift to lift the entire structure uh, caused the bend, uh, which caused the cart not to roll correctly. PPE is required. This one's pretty straightforward too. Um, steel to toe or composite footwear. Um, you know, I saw one of the comments in the um, survey was pulling the cart while walking backwards. Then they pulled it too hard, rolled over toe. That toe was not happy. Um, you know, um, so just make sure you're wearing the right PPE, especially also when you're using that drywall cart as a work table, scoring platform, mobile workstation. Um, you know, I'll leave it up to the field to decide what that PPE is, but make sure to have those requirements. Um, whole bunch of other stuff, we'll try to get to it in part two, but I think, you know, part of this discussion is, um, you know, it's an ongoing conversation. So here's a QR code. If you guys want to take some time right now to register, um, save that calendar invitation to your calendar so you don't forget to join. Yeah, so that um, registration link is live. So you wanna register now for part two of the dry cart safety. Um, well, thank you for, to the panelists for leading the discussion on dry cart, drywall cart safety. Join us part two, June 15th at 1 p.m. Um, also in the, handout section right now, you'll find Libya's um, 
slide deck here along with like a checkout list from Baker's Triangle about how to handle drive wall cart safety. And well, thank you panelists. Thank you everyone for joining us. Looking forward to um, seeing you all in part two. And I did record down all the questions that are here, so we didn't get to yours today. Well, I'll send that to the panelists and they can address that um, in part two. Thank you, panelists. Thank, Thank you. Everyone. Take care. See you next time.